Hey guys, welcome back. And we are in another snap video. And this one's kind of special to me because it is the longest grind I've ever done for snap. Uh, I've done, I've done some pretty large grinds. Food dog took me a very long time. Um, now I say that I can't remember a single video I've done. But this one does take the cake, which is weird. Oh yeah, and the Rambi Tan video, that one took forever for no reason. But this one is special because I think it's uh, pretty good, honestly. I, I think it is a very viable one. Specifically, I feel... Well, okay. But clearly it isn't viable, but uh, I guess I'll talk about it. We are going for hundreds of damage per summon, which is not easy to do. The plan is to use the Easter Egg and get Monty and then use three different summon enablers. Now, Monty is the rabbit that summons from the uh, the Easter Egg perk, and it does double damage. And there's three ways to enable it, and here's the first, is that level two flying fish. Uh, it actually has a, a different ability, even though it's a ten token pet, it has a different ability the more it levels up, which, come to think of it, I think most token pets that have an ability do that, it's just that most don't have an ability. But, a flying fish is honestly the star of this run. At level 1 and level 2, it's going to bring the Monty to triple damage instead of uh, double. But, at level 4, or, what? <laughs> at level 3, it will bring it to quadruple damage. So that is the first piece of this, and you can see... Honestly, I feel like God, Flying Fish is really underrated. It is a pretty darn good pet, and I will probably be doing more with it soon. Uh, and I just froze the second one. That is East... or that is... Seagull. Now, uh, I think the thing, the reason this build is so hard to get is because it is incredibly overkill. Um, and I'll talk about how if you wanted to do this in a way that would be actually decent, there's a way to do that. But we are going to really quickly get this level two seagull. Hmm. And grab a lizard just so we have something to buff this turn other than the uh, flying fish. Uh, or uh, sorry, other than the Monty. Can you tell I'm tired? I am exhausted. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we are going to give cheese to the seagull, which will make the Monty do another double damage. If you're noticing that we're building up a Emperor Tamarin. Now, I used Emperor Tamarin almost all of the runs. Uh, it is pretty high quality, and here we're already on one health, which stinks. But... We're going to use that for our final enabler, which is the German Shepherd, which is going to get obscene amounts of attack onto these pets. So we have almost the full setup here on turn 10, which is crazy. It's very early for that. Um, one reason this took so long, bam, 30 damage, first of all, that's cool. Um, that's not even close to how much damage we will be doing, but that's already probably more damage than we really need. But it's, it's just going to grow. We've got the cheese, so now we're gonna see what it looks like with a bit of cheese. But yeah, um, one thing that makes this pretty bad 60 damage is it is incredibly overkill, um, which is also the reason it is so fun. But we draw here, which is nice. Uh, that does make it very, very fun. Uh, we're gonna get the level 2 seagull here. We're just gonna continue to grow and damage Del. This is also very snipe susceptible, 76 damage. Um, 
And there is like, I think one of the few times our snipe doesn't immediately kill something. Or not our snipe, our summon. Can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> so now we really want, what I'm searching for is a third Easter egg to put on the flying fish. This kind of works out since, the, um, there's another reason this build is pretty, oh, 100 damage. That's a nice, uh, nice thing to hit, I suppose. And we actually win that one by one, which is crazy. But this works out in that the flying fish only has two triggers, so we can make it one of the summons without an issue. And I'm wondering if this here was a mistake going for a level three penguin, but you roll three penguins, you kind of have to take them. You've already got a level two penguin. Bam, 102 damage, 100 damage. It is a very fun build to go. I, uh, there's a f quite a few of these attempts where I got the German Shepherd, the Seagull, and the Flying Fish to level 3. Um, it doesn't re- but it's not like that really helps that much. The biggest thing is that that gives them a little bit of extra stats to run the XP, honestly. Um, using the pets I'm, summon I'm using as the summoners, as scalers helps. But it's so overkill that those levels don't matter and I'll get us into game 2. And here we are in game two. Uh, so yeah, with the combination of Monty, Seagull with cheese, and uh, a German Shepherd, you can do some pretty amazing things. Uh, specifically, uh, not that I ever got the pleasure of doing that in this run, but uh, it would be able like, we're doing 130 damage sometimes, 150. I did 200 in one game, which was insane, but I, I think I have heavily over-invested in my, uh, my damage rather than my number of summons in that game. So, unfortunately, I never one-shot a behemoth with melon, but that is a thing that these summons can do, which is the only way that you can do that with summons, I am almost certain. I, I can't... I wonder... Actually, that's not true. Um, if you can get, like, a lot of attack on a panther that's summoned from maybe a beluga, and then a seagull with steak, you can also do summons like this. Um, which, I guess, would be protected by ailments. Or, protected from ailments like uh, Frostwolf a little bit. Can't say I'd find that better, but that is another option. We actually win here. It's always nice to beat uh, Axe Handle Hound. Axe Handle Hound's not very uh, fun. To me, to me. And here we're starting off with a Scaler, which is nice. And we've already got an Emperor Tamarin, and we've already got a Flying Fish. Now, it's a bit of an interesting choice to sell my only summon to bring in the Flying Fish and to keep my giraffe buffing a bluebird, but this was probably about attempt 60 that I was doing this, and it became a little bit of autopilot. And I've been seeing a lot of people run Robin lately, and that's interesting. I don't... I'm not a huge Robin guy. I wish there was a way to... for, like, a certain pet to steal a friendly food perk. Uh, because I'd, I'd love to get, like the best egg on a panther. I think that'd be very amazing. That would be a lot of snipes. <laughs> and honestly, early on, this is a very good strategy. Like, obviously making a build out of it, not that great, but if you've got a flying fish and you've got Easter egg on your shop, this is absolutely viable. Uh, not only is it viable, it's like, but like I said, it's very strong. Like, that uh, jellyfish was almost fully wiped out. And, and just the attack it gets from the XP from the flying fish is usually enough. And here we've got Seagull with cheese. Again, very early. Um, obviously, you're seeing the runs that are kind of flukes or kind of uh, top-notch. 
Um, and you're also going to see uh, Red Dragon, which is one of the units. Red Dragon and Frost Wolf killed most of my runs. Like, if we went back to uh, what knocked these out, a third of them were enemy summons. Like, 25% of them were uh, Frost Wolf, and then the rest were Red Dragon. Ooh, 24 damage. <laughs> yeah, that brain cramp didn't stand a chance. And it's funny, our, our Emperor Tamron didn't even stand a chance. It's got really great stats. But luckily, we're running a summon build. And that's Elephant Blowfish. I don't know how we fare about against Elephant Blowfish. Poorly. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, I guess the weaknesses to this build are definitely ailments, because there's only one pet whose perk isn't, like, mandatory to the build, and that is the German Shepherd, which I usually try to give, like, a potato or pancakes, just to protect against snipes a bit. Also, uh, again, it was very late when I was doing this. My hatching chick is in the front. No, I will not elaborate. There's some ailments, but we tie, and we've actually got a lot of health right now. This is very good for one of my runs. But obviously, I mean, I'm showing it to you, but we, we managed to get two scalers, even though they're not the best scalers. Uh, we get two scalers for our summons, which is great. Yeah, so this is weak to summons. It's weak to snipes. It's weak to ailments. Um, other things it's fairly strong against. 84 damage. Uh, it's actually faring pretty well here. Um, I don't know if we win that. No, we don't win this. Actually, we don't even get that close, honestly. But this is still really good. Seven wins, two health. Turn 13, we have the full setup. And I grab those pancakes. Uh, at this point, what I'm looking for is seagull level ups. And some food for my German Shepherd. The food's gonna help keep it alive and give it more attack to, you know, do 138 damage with. Uh, and 69 damage, that's that's cool. That's, yo, you know, yay! Um, for all the 69 enjoyers, right? Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and we're looking for cheese, or we're looking for more seagull, sorry. Not because that will really help us in any way. Um, we're doing more than enough damage for a summon. 144. <laughs> it, this is one of the least painful grinds I've ever done, just because of how fun it was. But we're just trying to get the overkill, because it's fun. So there's our level 2 seagull. And I don't think we hit 200 damage in this run, unfortunately. If we leveled up the flying fish, I think we'd be really close. I don't know if we end up doing that or not. Um, the 200 damage in the thumbnail is not necessarily clickbait. I That is from a screen cap from a run, but I didn't manage to get that running in a game that I got any wins in. But we go against three of the most overpowered scalers and win, so I will take that win. Thanks for watching.